your forecast first. Sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. It's been a mild weekend here across central Illinois. Change is already moving on through. Our cold front has swept on through, pushing the rain to the south and to the east. In its wake, we've got wind gusts at times that have been 25 to 35 miles an hour. Sustained winds of 10 to 20, ushering in cooler and drier air. We're down to 37 in Champaign, 34 in Bloomington, 36 right now at the 10 o'clock hour in Springfield. We'll be heading down to the 20s. Windshield values in the teens tonight. The week ahead, though, looks pretty great as far as the forecast is going. We'll tell you about that as WCIA 3 News at 10 starts now. Now from WCIA 3 News. A fire forces a family from their home. What sparked a warning from neighbors and firefighters? Plus, four shooting investigations over a single weekend in Springfield. One man shot in the chest fights for his life. What police discovered inside a house today. And he's a lifesaver hundreds of times over. How long it took one veteran to donate 50 gallons of blood. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. So, so proud and appreciative to your job today. Champaign firefighters are investigating after a fire destroyed a home tonight. Good evening, I'm Mark Maxwell. And I'm Jen Lask. Firefighters responded to calls from neighbors at 4.30 after someone saw smoke. The fire took place near the corner of Cynthia and Paula Drives. WCIA 3's Jared Farmer joins us live in the newsroom. So, Jared, tell us what happened. Jen, firefighters are still investigating the cause and they're telling neighbors for now to be careful until they figure out exactly what set it off. I spoke with one of the next door neighbors who tells me he was eating a late lunch when he heard someone knocking. When he went outside, that is when he saw the smoke. He says police told him to move his cars out of the driveway since they're still investigating what caused the fire. They don't want to risk setting whatever caused it off again. Be careful for uh, midnight. Of course, it may be. It will not be flaming, but uh, it may be. Sometimes it may be again fire, blow up. So, as for the house itself, all of the interior was burned. Firefighters say no one was hurt in the fire, but the damage is too significant for the family to continue staying there. They will have to find shelter for the time being. Firefighters are saying to make sure that your smoke detector is working properly in case anything starts burning while you're inside. Jen, Mark, back to you. All right, Jared, thank you. Crews also responded to a fire in, in Springfield tonight. It happened around 5 o'clock near North Park Avenue and West Miller Street. Firefighters saw heavy smoke coming out of the, the front of the house when they arrived. Officials say the fire spread to two rooms. It took them about 10 minutes to get the fire under control. People were at home at the time of the fire. We had two adult occupants home at the time of the fire. Both got out to the front porch upon our arrival. Both were treated for minor smoke inhalation on scene. They were not transported. The people will have to find somewhere else to stay. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Also in Springfield tonight, a pol uh, police arrested a man for a shooting this morning that left another person fighting for his life. 24-year-old Tavares Douglas arrested for reckless conduct. A 22-year-old victim was shot in the chest near East Washington and North 13th Streets a little before 4.30 this morning. He was rushed to a hospital. Police identified Douglas at the scene and took him in for questioning. Investigators got a search warrant for the home and found a semi-automatic handgun inside. Douglas is at the Sangamon County Jail. Police say if you know anything, you can leave an anonymous tip with Crime Stoppers. An Indiana State Prison Guard will be returned to his final resting spot in Decatur tomorrow. Lieutenant Eugene Lasko was stabbed by an inmate last Sunday after rushing to help another guard. The inmate, 38-year-old Tymetri Campbell, is serving a 130-year prison sentence for three murder convictions. The other guard who was stabbed is stable. A funeral service for Lasko happened this afternoon in Indiana. He'll be taken to Decatur with a full police escort tomorrow. Crews responded after a semi-truck and a car crashed into one another in Cumberland County this afternoon. It happened around 2 o'clock in Greenup at U.S. Route 40 and State Route 130. We've reached out to officials there to learn what might have caused the crash or if anyone was hurt. We'll update you as we learn more.
The FDA authorized Johnson & Johnson's single-dose COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use. It's the third vaccine to become available in the U.S. and the first that only needs one dose to protect against the coronavirus. It's 85% effective compared to Pfizer and Moderna's, which are 95% effective. A few million doses could begin shipping as early as tomorrow. The U.S. has a deal to buy 100 million doses for $1 billion. Roughly 4,000 people have been vaccinated in Central Illinois' first mass vaccination site. Our partners at the State Journal Register report so far 62% of the vaccines given at the state fairgrounds have gone to Sangamon County residents. The rest were people living outside the county, mostly from the area, although some traveled from Chicago for the shots. Appointments are booked up there up till now at this point. Illinois continues to rank near the bottom nationwide in the speed of rolling out the vaccine. Right now, just 6.4% of Illinois has both vo uh, doses of the vaccine. Only Texas, Iowa, and Utah rank at a slower rate. 16% of the state has at least one shot so far. That's about the middle of the pack. The feds delivered 3.5 million doses to Illinois. So far, the state has put 2.7 million of them into people's arms. Today, the Department of Public Health reporting more than 1,200 new cases of the virus along with 22 more deaths. The average number of tests coming back positive is down to just 2.4%. Meanwhile, demand is down for COVID-19 tests across the country. The U.S. hit a peak in mid-January, averaging more than 2 million tests per day at the time. Since then, that's dropped off about 28%. Health officials are blaming multiple factors like harsh winter weather, pandemic fatigue, and a heavier focus on the vaccinations. In the last month, Illinois is averaging between 80 and 90,000 tests per day. That's much higher than it was in the fall, but still down from where it was uh, about 100,000 earlier this winter. The U of I updated its online COVID-19 dashboard. Officials say they wanted to give the public a better understanding of how COVID-19 is impacting life on campus. The dashboard will be updated daily with information including the number, the total number of test results, ongoing positivity rate, the number of new COVID cases, and the total number of uh, COVID-19 cases overall. One student says having access to all this data was uh, long overdue. I mean, we've been doing this this program since the since the summer, obviously, um, as far as the testing program, and it's been very effective. I'm definitely um, very grateful for that. Um, but I I do know that's a question a lot of um, me and a lot of my friends had was like they're collecting this demographic information. How are they planning on using it? To learn more about the full list of updates, be sure to check out our website wcia.com. In Charleston, one veteran is celebrating after donating his 50th gallon of blood. Don Schaefer has been donating pints since he was on tour in Germany in the 1950s. As of today, he's donated blood 402 times. The Red Cross in Charleston honored Schaefer with his very own plaque and banner, but Schaefer says the most rewarding thing is knowing his blood could be saving a person's life. You know it's helping someone. That's you know that it's doing some good out there in the community, and that's uh, I think about that all the time too. He says he doesn't think he'll try for 60 gallons, but still plans to continue donating blood. His donations could have saved up to 1,200 lives over the years. Thousands of conservatives crowded into an Orlando convention center for the annual CPAC event. The headliner. Former President Donald Trump showing his face in public for the first time since leaving office. Do you miss me yet? Do you miss me yet? Some adoring fans in the room even brought a golden statue of Trump. There it is. The former president teasing a potential run for re-election in four years, though he wouldn't commit to it. But on Face the Nation this morning, Illinois Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger said instead it's time for what he's called truth tellers to emerge with a competing vision for the future and challenge Trump as the leader of the Republican Party. I think we are a party that's been for too long peddling in fear, using fear as a compelling way to get votes, and fear does motivate. But after a while, fear can destroy a country, it can destroy narratives, and it can destroy a democracy. And we have to quit peddling that. Some notable absentees not in the room at CPAC this year. Former Vice President Mike Pence, Nikki Haley, and Mitt Romney did not attend.
All right, we've got Jacob here with my favorite forecast, I think, so far. Sunshine, sunshine. You're warm. right about that. Uh, we were spoiled this weekend by warm temperatures. It does come tomorrow, though, with some cooler air. The winds have picked up tonight. Our wind chill values tomorrow morning out the door actually will be in the teens. We're back in the 40s, though, into the afternoon. We'll talk more about that sunshine, plus when rain returns, coming up after this.